My name is Lisa Orr. So I've been working as a potter, teaching as a potter, making and selling stuff or whatever, involved in ceramics since basically 1980. I went to Eastern Europe to study what are the potter's lives where you don't have anything that you can buy from the clay store? Like how do you just get the job done um, when, you, when it's you and maybe some clay in a bank? I spent time in Macedonia where they made kilns out of basically a ring of either cinder block or bricks and they fired in two hours. They processed their own clay right out of the ground and process their own decorate, decorative materials out of the ground. And I just wanted to know how they do that. And I also studied in, in Mexico, same thing, similar, really the simpler kilns made with just the clay materials themselves. My name is Chris Alvashir. I have 14 years of ceramics experience. I have a education background, former middle school and high school art teacher. I have a lot of experience building kilns and repairing kilns, um, gas kilns, wood kilns, atmospheric kilns, self-supporting arches, that kind of stuff. I went to the rocket mass heater jamboree and with help built two rocket mass heaters in my own house. And, um, and I just kept imagining, you know, how can we do a low smoke, low wood kiln since then? And it had to be possible and it totally is. So I, I'm obsessed. Go ahead. Are we calling them rocket kilns? Yeah, we rocket are. Mass we're we're kilns. well. See, there's no mass. Right. So it's just a rocket engine kiln and rocket because it sounds like that's the funny thing is the both of those terms mean the different things in in the ceramics and in the permaculture world. Yeah. Rocket means the sound uh, a J2 makes when it's firing due to the turbulence of the um, combustion of all the gases, so that it's smoke free, and uh, we call rockets in ceramics kilns that fire too fast and blow your stuff up. It's very expensive to hook up a kiln. There are more people that would be involved with ceramics if it was easier and cheaper. And just the firing technology, for even for electricity, you're firing, it's like between, you know, 20, 30 bucks, 30, 40, 50, whatever, yeah. depending on how high you're firing and how big your kiln is and just how long the firing is, to buy all that power from the grid, wood kilns, I feel scandalized when I walk by them and they're firing, like I usually don't do wood firing, but um, I love low fire wood. I love the idea of it, mm -hmm. but it's so smoky. Like the really basic wood kilns, they have a lid that's oftentimes just shards. That's true in, in Eastern Europe and in Mexico. It was used, true in Eastern Europe, I'm not sure about now, but up until the mid nineties, they're topped with shards and they, they're wood firing. So all, these, all this smoke is going around you all the time. Mm -hmm and it's really bad for people's lungs. And the rocket mass came from Guatemala where the wood smoke was a problem and the problem was kind of solved in a lot of ways. We can do the same thing for potters. And also we both fire in oxidation, mm -hmm. which means low smoke. So if we can do that with just like this cute little engine and a little kiln chamber that's not functional for anything else anymore and just a few sticks of wood, yeah. I am all in. Yeah but I do connect the permaculture and pottery worlds. That's my one job. Absolutely. But now it's gonna <laughs> spread like wildfire because I am <laughs> determined you permies are gonna know how potters operate and how this stuff works so you can use it and make roof tiles or ollas for watering. You can learn how to test your clay, that your wild clay that you find. Potters are nuts for wild clay right now. Yeah. And so, you know, you guys, if y'all are out there prospecting and doing stuff, it, I don't know. And I think our Potter friends are going to flip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know we did, so. And there, yeah. you know, an old kiln shell is something that is frequently thrown away. This one has, that I had mm -hmm. found has been next to some railroad tracks, sort of under a tarp outside for I don't know how long. And we just used the soft insulating fire brick shell on top of the pre-existing J tube. The kiln that we fired most recently up to cone nine had a KO wool and metal mesh chimney that we had just found here as well. Um, so very minimal technology, minimal parts, very repurposable. Yeah, and the, the brick that's, the great thing about those is that when you go to buy one of those fire bricks, they can be like 10 bucks or yeah. something. That kiln is full of those. And they're already insulating. It's mm -hmm. already made, it's pre-built. I think we've been fortunate mm -hmm. to use a six inch and an eight inch tube, different kinds of wood. We've had local clay, clay that we've made, commercial clay, clay, clay that I've made. Clay our friends brought. Yeah, so we have way more 
information from a few firings that I ever thought we could have got based on firing temperature, location in the kiln, overhanging shelves, different stacking methods, different lid methods. Mm -hmm. We're on our fourth firing right now, right actually. Now. This is our third low fire, and we got one high fire done in an experimental kiln yesterday. That was cone nine on the bottom, cone six, seven on the top, way more even than I had anticipated. One of the kilns was cone 04, about 1,945 degrees Fahrenheit, around 2050 on top. And that was the first experimental firing in a brand new kiln design for all of us. I'm very excited about the rocket fired kiln. So the fact that we achieved high fire temperatures with just a, a little bit of wood and zero smoke is totally revolutionary. My wife's a ceramicist at home and I've been threatening to turn our old burnout electric kiln into a rocket kiln for ages and now I have an excuse to do so. That and being walked through the process of harvesting native clay to fire in that kiln and make usable pottery, that's really incredible. We have incredible clay, not only here and also at my home in Kansas, but in almost every location in the world. Like you don't have to source expensive clay that has high embedded energy from being mined and shipped somewhere else. It's usually right under your feet. We had even had some people who were kind of, you know, J-Tube experts going, I don't know if you can get that to work. That's, you know, and Paul was kind of like, we're trying it. And the first proof of concept was quite interesting and quite spectacular. We've already in the first firing done things that are almost impossible in a wood fired kiln. We've done it with basically no smoke, whereas normally there, you know, smoke is a big problem. We've done it with a fraction of the wood that they would normally use. I would love potters to embrace this and do all kinds of experiments with it. And I would love for the permies to have more freedom to take the clay resources around them and make things that they want, you know, from their land. Because, you know, I've, I've looked at lots of, I'm not going to, the word primitive is a pejorative, but simple kilns. Mostly people get lots of smoke and low temperature, and we can get almost no smoke and whatever temperature we want, yeah. high temperature, you know, like the, the high temperature potters use. Historically, potters have to move out of town because they smoke everybody out. And this happened in Siegberg, in Frechen, in Germany, in different places. The potters, they set up a business in a town, the town grows, the town is smoky whenever the potter fires, everybody's annoyed and the, they evict the potters legally. So in ancient Greece, this even happened in Athens. The name of the graveyard area, it was the Karamos neighborhood. And so the potters were forced to live out there by the Karamos neighborhood, which is where we get the ceramics term. We were, we've named ceramics out of being pushed out of town because of smoke. <laughs> it took us this long, what, 3,500 years or whatever. But this is an option that, you know, could be fired year round in town. Very, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no need to be stealthy, but uh -uh. you know. Yeah, safe, case, and this is really yeah. safe. Yeah, safe. It's very, con Amazing the fire's draw. very contained. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing on the outside. I use an industrial porcelain that I make from scratch that does best and I guess succeeds through firings better with less warpage and less cracking if I fire it as fast as a kiln will go. And so normally I'm somewhere between four and a half and five hours up to top temp. And we hit that in under five with this kiln yesterday. And during our unload today, the work looked very Perfect. similar, if not the same as it did out of an electric kiln that I frequently use $30 of electricity every time I fire. Plus you have to buy a kiln and yeah. hook it up. Yeah. And then there's the three to $5,000 upfront expense to purchase that electric kiln. And this is a old. I yeah. It was a piece of junk that's, that's yeah. really got value. Yeah. Very basic technology that works shockingly well for ceramics. Right? Oh my yeah. God.